Three powerful storms are coming to the United States over the next seven days, and all of these are going to cause big problems, including the risk of major flooding, very high winds, and even the threat of extreme snowfall. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And today is beautiful. I mean, we don't really have that many problems across the United States. The only two things that we are really watching right now is this right here over in the southeast. That is an area of moisture that is currently building, and we are anticipating that this is going to become a nor'easter as we go into this weekend and early next week. It is expected to bring major flooding and very high winds from Florida all the way back up into New England between now all the way through at least Tuesday of next week. So this is going to be a big storm that forms over the next few days. We'll talk more about it in just a moment. It's going to bring impacts similar to what a hurricane would bring. Back over in the desert southwest, we actually have a lot of moisture currently coming out of the Pacific. That right there is Hurricane Priscilla, which is going to be heading its way up towards the Baja California over the next couple of days. And then all that moisture is going to surge into the desert southwest, bringing the potential for some historic flooding. And then lastly, we have a pretty intense low pressure system just offshore of Oregon and Washington. This weekend, this will move across Montana and even Wyoming. This will bring a ton of snow to the Rockies and a potential for a blizzard in Canada. Now let's talk more about all these big storms that are going to be coming to the United States states over the next several days and to look at that we're going to look at our mid-level flow and our jet stream this is what it looks like right now we got a low pressure system currently located over the southeast and then another low pressure system that has just formed over the last couple of days that's located over the great lakes and obviously we have our big storm back over in the pacific northwest and then a lot of moisture currently coming out of the pacific so there's a lot of things happening right now now over the next 24 to 48 hours this is going to be the area to watch for because we're going to have two storm systems essentially merging into one as we go into Saturday and Sunday. And all that energy is going to build from two basically small storms to becoming one big storm. So as we go into Saturday and Sunday, look at that evolution. We're going to start to see two low pressure systems get a lot closer together and then start to merge as we go into late Saturday and Sunday. This is going to create one big storm system. Luckily, this is not going to be a tropical storm or hurricane. It's not going to have tropical characteristics. However, it's going to stay just barely offshore. And while it does that, it's going to generate all all sorts of wind that's going to be cranking in the Atlantic Ocean, and we are expecting basically the same impacts that a tropical storm would bring, just a bit more of a coastal storm rather than an inland storm. With all that said, we are talking about the potential for major flooding. Wind gusts could be as high as 80 to 90 miles per hour at times, anywhere from the South Carolina area all the way back into southern New England. We'll talk more about who's going to see those high of winds in just a moment. Now, all that's happening, we also have a big storm system that'll be moving over Montana and as well as Wyoming. This will bring the threat of some showers, some thunderstorms, perhaps isolated severe weather Sunday and Monday across the central and northern plains. But the bigger story is going to be how much snow it's going to bring anywhere from Idaho and Montana all the way back up into parts of Saskatchewan and Canada. And so we're definitely going to see a lot of snow out of this. And we'll talk more about who's going to see snow as well in just a moment. Now, by the time we go to the middle of next week, a big ridge is going to build back along the Gulf Coast. This is going to be kind of a suppressor from any sort of tropical activity forming in the northern Gulf. As we all know, it's been a very quiet tropical season, not forecasting anything in the Gulf here over the next five to seven days. And then eventually by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, another big storm system will be located over the desert southwest. This will likely bring even more extreme rainfall. Now let's put this into more simplistic terms with our future radar. This is what it looks like tonight. We're going to have plenty of showers and thunderstorms across Florida and even parts of Georgia. Notice how we have a low pressure system around 1,007 millibars and a very weak low pressure system with some showers moving across Michigan. High pressure will also be building across Minnesota and the Dakotas. It'll be pretty windy tonight into tomorrow as well across much of the Great Plains. Now, as we go into Saturday afternoon, that low pressure system is going to eject to the north. It's going to start to intensify as it gets closer to Cape Hatteras and much of eastern North Carolina. It's going to be dumping rainfall Saturday and Sunday with the potential for flooding rainfall being in play as well. Sunday morning, the storm system is going to be making its way up towards Maryland. The GFS model has it going inland as we go into Sunday afternoon back over in Virginia. This will propel a bunch of showers and thunderstorms across Pennsylvania, Virginia, back into southern New England. While all that's happening, we got a very intense low pressure system that'll be forming over North Dakota. Look how tight these isobars are as well. That indicates very high wind speeds across the central and northern plains. So it will be windy once again on Sunday and Monday. This is very similar to what we just dealt with this past weekend as well. On the, the flip side as well, there will be some heavy snowfall across Idaho, Montana, and as well as Canada with blizzard conditions possible in parts of Saskatchewan. 
Saskatchewan. As we go into late Sunday and early Monday, that storm will continue to move across Canada. Unfortunately, if you want snow in the United States, not much of that is coming unless you're back over in the Pacific Northwest. And then back over in the Northeast, we have a low pressure system that will continue to propel showers and thunderstorms across the Northeast. This will continue as a nor'easter on Monday. And then by the time we go into Tuesday, it'll weaken. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, we are done with the nor'easter here along the East Coast. As we go to the middle and end of next week, we're going to be pretty much in a more quiet state of mind for most of the country. I'm not expecting any big storm systems as of right now, but it's definitely going to be active over the next five days, especially if you're back along the West Coast, the desert Southwest, or right along the East Coast. Now, one big problem that this storm system is going to bring along the East Coast is rainfall. There will be a potential for some major flooding as we go into this weekend and early next week. This is the latest from the Weather Prediction Center's estimate on how much rain could fall out of this particular storm system. And notice it's pretty much a widespread one to three inches of rain in southern and central New England, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, all the way through Cape Hatteras and eastern parts of Virginia as well. There will definitely be localized areas, though, that get closer to five to eight inches of rainfall and a localized area of 10 to 12 inches of rain is entirely possible, especially if we get some more intense bands on the northern side of that low pressure system that could get pretty close to the coast. And I do think Cape Hatteras is definitely at risk for one of those areas that could see upwards of 10 to 12 inches of rain, maybe even southern Delaware, New Jersey, perhaps even eastern New Jersey as well. And once these two different storm systems collide, the one in the Great Lakes and the one in the southeast, we are going to see the winds rapidly pick up. We're not really going to be dealing with high winds, though, until Saturday afternoon. Wind gusts will be around 40 to 50 miles per hour right along the Carolina coastline. Offshore winds could be as high as 60 to 70 miles per hour at the same exact time. And then by the time we go into Saturday evening, notice how the winds are upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour. We got some of those oranges leaking into Cape Hatteras that will eventually make its way up towards Delaware and Maryland as we go into early Sunday. And then eventually into the middle of Sunday, we are talking about very high winds across New Jersey, Pennsylvania, even as far west as Washington, D.C., with widespread wind gusts between 40 to 70 miles per hour. There is a potential for isolated power outages. If you have any sort of Halloween inflatables that are outside, those could go flying. So you might want to bring those inside for the weekend. And then as we go into early Monday morning, those winds will make their way all the way up into southern New England. They won't be nearly as intense as they'll be in Pennsylvania, but we're still talking about wind gusts around 40 to 60 miles per hour. So definitely make sure that you're preparing for the significant wind threat here. I know this is not a hurricane or a tropical storm, but you should be taking it as if it is one, because we're going to be talking about basically every threat that comes out of a tropical system. The only difference is we're not really talking about much of a threat of storm surge, and it's not going to be an actual tropical storm. It's with that said, we're talking about major flooding, very high winds, and the threat of beach erosion along the coastlines. Now back over in the Great Plains, we're not really talking about much rainfall over the next seven days, but the winds will be high as we go into Saturday night and Sunday. These are your wind gusts Saturday night, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts across the Dakotas, all the way into the Texas Panhandle. As we go into Sunday morning, those winds will remain high from central Minnesota all the way through central Kansas. And then on Monday, winds will still be somewhat high, but not as bad. Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way back into the Texas Panhandle and New Mexico, dealing with wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles per hour. So if you have any outdoor plans, any tents that are put up, definitely make sure that you are aware of how high the winds could be. They could go flying, and we could even have some flying trampoline leans this weekend. I'm definitely not ruling that out. Now, our other storm system that is down in the desert southwest is about to dump a ton of rain over the next few days. Beginning with this morning, we got plenty of showers and even some thunderstorms out there across Utah, western Colorado, and Arizona. This will really ramp up, though, tonight across Arizona, where moderate to heavy rainfall will be ongoing. Flash flooding will become a concern tonight and as well as into tomorrow. As we go into late Saturday, those showers and thunderstorms will continue. They'll drift a little bit further off to the east for primarily areas in southeastern Arizona and across much of New Mexico. There will also to be some storm activity back up in Utah. And unfortunately, I do think that this is going to continue as we go into Sunday, Monday, and even Tuesday. So this is going to be a multi-day big rain event across the desert southwest. So over the next few days, we are going to be picking up an abnormal amount of rain across the desert southwest. And this is all the way through Monday afternoon into early Tuesday. We are anticipating as much as one to four inches of rain from western Colorado all the way through central Arizona back over near Phoenix. There could also be some areas, though, that pick up a localized amount of upwards of five to seven inches of rainfall that is near historic levels in some spots so we're talking about a lot of rain this is going to lead to flooding so make sure if you're on the roadways turn around don't drown and then on top of all of this we also have snow coming as i alluded to earlier in the forecast we're going to have plenty of snow falling across the pacific northwest as we go into sunday and monday and we are talking about the potential for eight to 16 inches of snowfall back up into parts of canada this will primarily be falling on late sunday night into early monday and then by tuesday it'll start to wind 
down. So a little bit of early season snowfall if you're back over in the Pacific Northwest. And on top of that, we got a winter storm coming to parts of Canada. Now, on top of all the crazy weather that's happening, we are going to see a big temperature shift as we go into the late weekend and early next week. Right now, above average temperatures are dominating most areas in the Great Plains. The East Coast is kind of a mixed bag of just slightly above or below average temperatures. As we go into late Sunday and early Monday, look at this big shot of cold air that's going to usher into the Northwest and as well as across the Northern Plains. Temperatures will fall by as much as 20 to 30 degrees as we go into Monday. It's not going to be a very long lasting shot of cold air, though, because that is only going to last maybe 24 to 36 hours before we go right back to near average temperatures late Tuesday night into early Wednesday. And then by Thursday and Friday, it's going to be kind of mixed across the entire country. Some areas will be below average and some areas will be above average, but no big heat waves beyond what we're going to be seeing Sunday. Sunday, we will have the potential for some record breaking temperatures across Canada and as well as the central and northern plains. On top of all the stuff we've talked about, we also now have two tropical storms in the Atlantic Ocean, beginning with Tropical Storm Jerry, which is located over the Lesser Antilles. This will be moving off to the north over the next few days and then eventually turning out to sea. It really will not be impacting Bermuda very much, but it will continue to impact the Leeward Islands for the next 24 hours with heavy rainfall and some storm surge. We also have Subtropical Storm Karen in the northeastern Atlantic Ocean. This right here is going to give some attitude. This will be continuing to move off to the northeast over the next couple of days. It really will not be much of anything. It is going nowhere near the United States. With all that said, this is Jerry. It will continue to move off to the north over the next few days. It will likely become a hurricane as we go into Sunday morning. And then beyond that, it'll weaken back into a tropical storm. There's so much wind shear with Jerry to the point where it's very unlikely it'll become much more than just a low end or category one hurricane. And then this right here is subtropical storm Karen. It'll be moving off to the northeast. It'll weaken as we go into late Saturday. And that'll be the end of Karen. And Karen might also have to talk to a manager after it's all said and done. And this is a closer look at tropical storm Jerry over the Lesser Antilles. There is a ton of deep convection right now just to the east of the Lesser Antilles. With that said, there's been so much wind shear that this is actually not as intense as it could be. We thought initially this might become a hurricane by today. It looks like it's going to try to do that as it continues to move to the north. It will likely not get to Category 2 intensity as what was initially forecasted by the National Hurricane Center. However, it will likely still become a hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean as it moves to the north, just to the southeast of Bermuda. And this is the cone of uncertainty for Tropical Storm Jerry. It's forecasted to become a hurricane Saturday afternoon as it makes its way to the north, and then it will eventually take an east turn as we go into Sunday, just to the east of Bermuda. There will be some minor impacts to Bermuda, but luckily not nearly as bad as what we saw with the Melda just a couple of weeks ago. As always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will likely be tomorrow or Sunday, so stay tuned and we'll see you all again in the next video.